I'm very uh, thankful and uh, I'm glad that I was invited to uh, this seminar to introduce my, my recent research and, and also uh, just to follow up for Martin's presentation to, to mention a few words uh, as advertisement of uh, new tendencies in Estonian memory studies field that uh, we are trying to bring together in Estonia memory studies from different disciplines and uh, uh, this November we will have already second uh, Estonian memory studies uh, workshop uh, where we also uh, expect international guests event is uh, in English so therefore everybody who are interested in uh, memory studies in Estonia then uh, November 14 and 15, you are most welcome to, to come to Tartu and uh, attend this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, but um, if you have questions about this uh, network, then of course you can ask, uh, ask later. But uh, now I would like to move on with, um, uh, with my presentation. Uh, as you probably already heard from introduction, then uh, uh, I do not feel very comfortable with uh, post-Soviet or post-communist uh, framing. Uh, for me, it is more suitable post-colonial uh, framework. Uh, even though at the moment this presentation um, probably could fit into this uh, post-Soviet uh, context as well. Uh, my presentation uh, focuses on, on Holocaust and um, it, it is definitely a very uh, sensitive topic uh, but also in Estonian context it is a topic which is not much uh, remembered um, and uh, here Estonia definitely is uh, quite different from, from Latvia or Lithuania we very often are lumped together thinking that all the Baltic states they are the same um, actually, uh, there is uh, also quite big differences uh, and we can't uh, trace all the developments uh, in the same way in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Um, why Estonia is a different case? Uh, first, uh, Estonia did not have uh, such a big uh, Jewish community uh, before the war. Uh, there were 4,000 or slightly over 4,000 people uh, in this community. Uh, Estonian Jews had cultural autonomy, uh, which was quite exceptional uh, policy, uh, not only in, uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, but uh, in entire Europe. Uh, and uh, also how the Nazi armies advanced, uh, it uh, gave some more time for Estonian Jews to escape from Estonia so that uh, three-fourths of Estonian uh, Jewish community uh, managed to uh, escape to uh, Soviet Union uh, and um, they not, did not become victims of uh, uh, Nazi crimes or, or Holocaust. So uh, having this background, uh, therefore, there is also not much active social memory of uh, uh, killings uh, of, of Jewish community uh, in, in Estonia. There are few fragmented uh, stories which are particularly now digged out uh, in, during the Holocaust uh, commemoration day in January uh, and then try to integrate them more uh, into Estonian um, uh, collective memory. Uh, but uh, it is, was quite missing in, in Estonian collective memory. Also, we should not forget the Soviet um, uh, period, which uh, did not develop the, the concept of, of Holocaust anyhow. Uh, it was uh, lumping all the victims uh, together, saying that they were all Soviet citizens uh, who uh, suffered, and um, there wasn't even great this kind of understanding that um, uh, there was some particular crimes against uh, Jews. So uh, therefore, um, only after the uh, restoration of independence, uh, Estonians started to develop this uh, own narrative and this own understanding uh, of, of Holocaust and try to make sense uh, what has uh, 
happened in Estonia. Definitely, it was a uh, very marginal topic uh, in uh, uh, in the context of uh, of Soviet crimes because. Uh, uh, Soviet crimes uh, took the primary attention for uh, historians uh, as well. Um, uh, there were a lot of social memory about the Soviet crimes. Uh, uh, Martin's already mentioned the oral history project and so on. So that uh, this got uh, big attention and Holocaust uh, remained uh, as a one background story of uh, Nazi occupation or as it in Estonian social memory and also often in official uh, text is called uh, a German occupation. Uh, but uh, the EU enlargement, uh, NATO enlargement uh, brought uh, this topic uh, outside to, to Estonian uh, uh, society. Uh, Martin's also uh, mentioned this uh, phenomenon uh, in, in Latvia. A uh, similar thing happened in Estonia. And uh, in the eve of uh, NATO enlargement, uh, America took a very uh, strong position. We also had very active and outspoken uh, American ambassador in Estonia, maybe even too uh, provocative uh, in his statements. Um, and uh, uh, Estonia introduced uh, the Holocaust Commemoration Day uh, and it was in Estonia perceived as external pressure, uh, kind of uh, uh, a key to, to become a NATO member. Um, why Estonians were reluctant uh, on this matter? Uh, because it was not very good timing. Um, because at the same time, uh, uh, Simon Wiesenthal Center uh, issued a call for for last chance to find the Nazi uh, collaborators, and uh, he used uh, the language in his public call that was uh, published in uh, in Estonian newspapers, which was very similar that uh, Soviet uh, propaganda used. Uh, uh, to, to describe the, the Second World War uh, events in Estonia. So this uh, created this kind of uh, negative background and then when the American ambassador uh, made his uh, public statements, then uh, it uh, made the things even worse. Uh, not, uh, did not anyhow open the eyes of Estonians what probably the American ambassador expected to, uh, to happen. However, the Holocaust Commemoration Day was introduced, uh, even though it wasn't so happily accepted by, uh, um, uh, by, by the society. And uh, now it is there, it is every, every year uh, uh, commemorated. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, it has uh, in the long run brought this result that, that these few fragmented memories uh, uh, that uh, people have, um, they now become part of, uh, of public discourse. So that in, in that sense, definitely, uh, in long run, it had uh, its, um, uh, its uh, important impact. So this is this kind of background uh, uh, in which context I, I opened this, this issue. Uh, one, one more development um, that uh, briefly also Martins mentioned uh, is that uh, the, the concept of, of two totalitarian regimes uh, and, uh, and this memory struggle in broader European context uh, trying to bring uh, the Soviet crimes uh, uh, or get the similar attention for the Soviet crimes uh, on European level and not only uh, focus on, um, uh, on Nazi crimes. So that this also has its impacts on, on the narratives that we can um, see from, uh, from, from textbooks. So uh, very briefly, you can see here um, uh, the, the textbooks I analyze. So basically, they're all the textbooks published in Estonia since uh, 1989. Uh, 89, Estonia was not yet uh, independent, but this was the first textbook uh, that already included this kind of national uh, narrative 
with a quite strong uh, Marxist um, uh, framing, of, of course, but uh, it's this kind of first, uh, um, not purely Soviet uh, textbook published in, in Estonia. Uh, Estonian history curriculum is um, divided uh, into two major parts. First, there is a general history that uh, talks about the global uh, historical developments, and uh, then there is a separate uh, curriculum for Estonian national history. Uh, and general history is offered uh, in two levels, first in the primary school and 20th century in the ninth grade, and then um, again it uh, uh, is taught in uh, gymnasium level. So therefore these textbooks are also a little bit uh, different. Uh, and here you just can see these uh, different textbooks. Uh, I do not stop here very long because probably this information is not so much informative uh, for you. <laughs> it's also the textbook titles are, are in Estonia. Uh, so uh, what I was interested in uh, in these textbooks um, are, are the following questions. So that um, first, uh, is this term Holocaust at all used in the textbooks? Then how it is uh, defined? Uh, in which context uh, it is presented? Uh, then what are the main uh, themes related to, to Holocaust? Uh, what is the connection of uh, Estonia and Estonians uh, with the Holocaust? And uh, then who are defined as the victims and who are defined as the perpetrators? Um, when we uh, see the uh, Holocaust definition, then um, there is a, a slight uh, development where we can see that early 90s textbook uh, was less accurate and then frame it only as some kind of event in the Jewish uh, history. Uh, the later textbooks uh, uh, provide more accurate uh, definition what, uh, uh, what the Holocaust uh, is uh, and it's not anymore framed as, as a narrowly uh, Jewish uh, issue. Uh, the Estonian history textbooks uh, <coughs> do not provide a separate definition for, for the Holocaust. They rely on uh, expectations that uh, students already know what this term means uh, from, uh, uh, from the general history program. And uh, therefore, they do not offer differ different uh, definition. Uh, but it's also not um, always used in the textbook. So that uh, you can see that in some textbooks it is used. Um, and uh, in some textbook is, is used genocide uh, instead of uh, Holocaust. Uh, what is the uh, context of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, term? Also, basically, I looked what are the uh, subsections uh, uh, in, in different textbooks uh, where this uh, topic is, is covered. Uh, so as I mentioned, the early 90s book defined it a Jewish issue, so that, that was a, a subtitle uh, of, of this section. Um, but uh, the later textbooks, they um, interestingly put them together uh, to, uh, with, with the Nazi repressions, but the Nazi repressions are also very often put together with uh, resistance, so that this is all developed as, a, as a one uh, comprehensive topic. Uh, however, Jews are never shown as um, active members of resistance, so that uh, those who resist uh, the Nazi regime, those are not Jews, but um, for example, Poles uh, are, are presented as a very primary uh, example in, in our textbooks. Um, so, and um, in, in the uh, later period, uh, we can see there uh, some tendency that uh, this, uh, what I already mentioned, the two totalitarian regimes, uh, and then try to see, see the, the crimes of, of two totalitarian regimes uh, parallel. Uh, this, uh, I wouldn't say that it is yet the trend, but it seems that this is moving that direction, so that we should see the, the further textbooks uh, issued uh, 
before we can really uh, call it as, as a trend, but, um, but it could be a potential trend where these textbooks uh, will develop. Now, when we talk about uh, Estonian textbooks, or Estonian history uh, textbooks, then um, uh, of course the 89 textbook did not mention uh, Holocaust and, and uh, not even the Jewish victims. Uh, everybody were uh, Soviet citizens, either they were the war prisoners or civilians, uh, but uh, not a word about Jews. Uh, all the later uh, textbooks uh, touch this topic under the uh, chapter what is called uh, German occupation, not Nazi occupation, but German occupation, what the other said that this is what uh, it is in Estonian um, uh, social memory as well. Uh, it's uh, seen more uh, related to the uh, ethnic group than, than ideology. Uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, this kind of attempts to uh, to develop this topic uh, uh, broader so that uh, in some uh, textbooks, uh, recent textbooks, there are even a separate uh, uh, subsections where uh, the, it is called Holocaust or deals with the uh, genocide, which uh, 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 definitely mainly uh, mentions the uh, killing of Jews and Romani uh, community in Estonia. Uh, and these are two major topics which are uh, mentioned. So that the uh, first is a concentration camps. So that this is actually already going back to the 89. This, since then, the concentration camp, this is the, the major uh, topic, even though actually Estonian own Jewish community was uh, killed before the concentration camps uh, were set up in Estonia. Uh, and then the, those Jews killed in Estonian concentration camps, uh, they were brought in from other European countries. And uh, the other part when it is mentioned, it is uh, the concluding part of the Second World War, which is then counting the, the loss of, uh, losses uh, uh, during the war, and then uh, when it uh, then also covers the, uh, the loss of population uh, where uh, different ethnic groups uh, that disappeared in Estonia during the war uh, are, are mentioned. So, uh, next theme is then uh, what uh, are the different um, uh, themes mentioned uh, when uh, uh, the textbooks cover the topic Holocaust. Uh, and uh, definitely there is established linkage between um, anti-Semitic uh, policies in, in Nazi Germany and uh, then uh, the uh, Holocaust during the, during the war. Uh, so that uh, this kind of uh, race between the racist policies and, uh, and massive killings, uh, definitely the, the linkage uh, exists. Uh, the primary focus is death camps, also in, uh, in the general uh, history textbooks. Uh, so that uh, Auschwitz particularly, but also uh, several other uh, death camps are, are mentioned in the textbooks. Some textbooks uh, describe more uh, in detail the uh, atrocities uh, that happened in, the, uh, in, in the, these, these camps. Um, and actually it's interesting that uh, the only witness testimony is the testimony of, of a perpetrator. So that uh, the head of Auschwitz camp, uh, his uh, testimony uh, in uh, uh, Nuremberg trial where, where he basically tells very without any uh, emotions or, or, or pity what, what was happening, just describing uh, what was the most efficient way to, to kill the Jews. It is very interesting that there was no uh, witness uh, of uh, Holocaust survivors uh, uh, in, in the textbooks. I only discovered in one um, workbook uh, there was a small uh, paragraph of uh, one Jewish girl uh, who described what she felt uh, during, during these, these years, but, um, but otherwise it's not um, part in, in Estonian textbooks. 
Also, ghettos are uh, mentioned uh, in uh, in the textbooks, uh, and uh, uh, then uh, there are few references, also some kind of resistance uh, activities. But uh, as I mentioned, that uh, they are usually framed as at these were the resistance activities that more or less were uh, anyway. Uh, Meant to be meant to fail because uh, uh, it was impossible to to resist uh, Nazi uh, Nazi regime. Uh, so therefore, the Jews are framed as as only passive victims uh, of these uh, uh, policies. Uh, in Estonian textbooks, uh, also concentration camps uh, get the uh, uh, biggest uh, biggest attention. Uh, uh, it's uh, also mentions that uh, that makes the difference between uh, Estonian Jews and uh, Jews from Europe, uh, who are uh, mentioned as a few different categories. Uh, and only recent textbooks try to bring in some kind of make make sense why. Uh, as some Estonians uh, participated in in Holocaust or what they felt about these uh, these policies or how much they knew at all about uh, uh, these uh, these uh, actions, and only in recent textbooks are are mentioned that the Estonian walls uh, already in 42 called uh, Judenfrei. What's also interesting uh, trend that uh, you see actually there are quite different numbers uh, sh what show that the numbers of victims uh, in uh, uh, in the 90s the numbers are more than hundred thousands or, or tens and thousands uh, which are, are mentioned but uh, uh, as also in Latvia there was the history uh, commission and also uh, the similar uh, commission was in Estonia. And then these earlier quite big numbers uh, are related to this kind of Soviet uh, propaganda uh, or Soviet version of history, uh, which actually did not base on uh, on truthful facts. And then this new history committee has worked through these materials, and and uh, now the textbooks have more uh, accurate number, which is around 30 or over over 30,000 people. And this includes all, not not only a Jewish um, uh, population. Um, about the victims, uh, the the general uh, textbooks uh, do not have very clear understanding uh, how to present it, so that the, you can some present Jews as a separate case, some uh, present Jews uh, as uh, one of the many uh, group of uh, of victims. Uh, but it seems that uh, uh, Jews, Roma community, uh, and homosexuals, actually homosexuals are mentioned only in one textbook, uh, and that uh, this is con framed as, uh, as a specific uh, target of, of Nazi crimes, and then the others, uh, for example, Slavic population, communists, or war prisoners, are uh, then uh, mentioned as uh, also as the victims, but they are not lumped together with uh, these specific groups of uh, victims. In the Estonian textbook, it's uh, more put together, so that uh, uh, the, the biggest number of victims were among the, the war prisoners, and, and therefore uh, uh, probably uh, it's, or at least the textbook treats all the different categories. They, they mention all these categories, but uh, they are put together as victims of, of Nazi crimes, and they do not emphasize that uh, these are the, the Holocaust victims or there were some uh, uh, specific policy. It's also probably expected from, from the earlier textbooks uh, to, to know what, uh, what the Holocaust is, or, or at least it's not specifically uh, framed. Um, about uh, the perpetrators, uh, here we can see that, yes, this is one more slide, and then uh, here we can uh, see that uh, only uh, last decade, uh, 
the, the question of collaboration and uh, the responsibility of other nations is also mentioned in, in the textbooks. Uh, but it's interesting that in Estonian own uh, textbooks uh, or Estonian national textbooks, uh, the uh, responsibility of Estonians uh, starts already from, from 89 and uh, uh, it is definitely already the, the topic uh, in, in the 90s, but it's very briefly mentioned basically with one or two sentences that um, very often those who <coughs> executed these policies, uh, they were uh, local Estonians. Uh, okay, I will stop here. Uh, and if someone has uh, later some questions, then. Uh. Thank you very much.